I heard from players all over the world saying, I'm so inspired and motivated by what the women in the NWSL are doing. Just when you have women come together, you're gonna get diversity, you're gonna get strong voices, you're gonna get empowerment because we've been fighting this fight since we were born and so we're ready to take on all the fights. My name is Allie Riley and I am a soccer player for Angel City and the New Zealand national team. My mom's parents came to San Diego from China. My dad came from New Zealand to the United States. So we're kind of new Americans and getting to know New Zealand by playing for the national team has been really, really cool. And I think a very unique experience. The weirdest part now is probably being older than like staff. It's a very, very bizarre feeling because I still feel like a kid. And obviously when I'm chasing 22 year olds, it's hard to remember that I'm 34. And then when I'm with my family, it's like, okay, like I have to take out the trash and like do the dishes. I absolutely love it. Is tennis or just like hanging out with your family something you're normally doing on your off day? Yeah, I've been going to the beach and then we've played paddle. But now since they came here, tennis is perfect. Once you've hit it, you're gonna carve it like this. Okay. My dad was my biggest, biggest supporter. He was my coach until I was 14. Coach or soccer coach? Tennis. <laughs> mom, you're good. You know, my mom drove me pretty hard. She hates when I call her a tiger mom, so she was not a tiger mom. She was like a tiger, like puppy mom. Okay, mom, I'm gonna try to serve. I was watching Serena. They instilled in me the desire to whatever I put my mind to, to give it my best, but it was never specifically about trying to be an athlete or a soccer player. It wasn't until I was a senior in college at Stanford that the league came back and that's when I was like, oh, maybe I'll try my hand at being a professional athlete. When she was in eighth grade, she was playing flag football. One of the dads uh, came up to me and said, uh, John, I bet I'm the first, but I know I won't be the last. Is that what it means? I want to be her agent when she grows up. So there are so many things that I'm interested in, and right now it's been kind of what can I do while playing soccer, and I think food and cooking come so naturally with that. And I am a soon-to-be cookbook author, which is crazy to even say. It smells so good in here. <laughs> My mom is the Chinese Martha Stewart. She is an amazing, amazing chef. And I brought these gourmet lunches in my lunchbox to school. Of course, I didn't appreciate it then. I wanted to get the mac and cheese from the cafeteria. I was so ungrateful. Cooking the rice noodles, and then I gotta make my peanut dressing, and we'll be good to go. And now I love going home and having dinner and I get all my tips from her. My partner in crime, Tony Presley, who plays for Orlando. She is my co-author and she's taught me a lot, but having a cooking show and writing this cookbook and making healthy eating fun, affordable, exciting, delicious. It's a lot of work, but it's a fun way to bring people together. Oh, do you want some plates? Or are we just gonna I'll get, get it. family stuff? Sit down, sit down. <laughs> I don't think I really started appreciating my Chinese side until recently, and it was through really tough and emotional conversations with my mom about her family, because really in light of COVID and the racism that a lot of Asians were facing. When did I first cook you a meal, mom? Buffalo? Well, the only thing I remember about buffalo is when you made the fish tacos. <laughs> when I made the fish tacos. I pass as white, whereas my mom and her sisters had a very different experience. So the more I learn about my mom and my grandparents, it just gives me even more gratitude for what my parents have given me and what I hope to do in terms of making an impact in the communities that need support. I never had someone that I really was like, I want to be that person when I grow up. And if I did, it was Kobe Bryant, it was Kobe Jones, but I think it is really cool to now be someone that little kids can look to. Honestly, the first game when June was the player of the game and seeing the Japanese flags in the crowd, to have grown adults crying after the game because they were so happy to see someone who looks like them on the field. That's what's going to make people want to come and play in this league and top players from all over the world. And that's going to make little girls of all backgrounds and all skin colors and all beliefs want to pick up sport. And that's what's going to make this league even better.
The thing about trying to figure out what younger me would think about all of this, I think she would be like, wow, you are a Hollywood movie star because you went on Jimmy Kimmel. But besides that, I mean, she wouldn't even be able to comprehend it because that's how far we've come. Like, I didn't have this dream. I didn't know it was possible. So it's kind of impossible for me to be able to look back at that time, whereas I'm so privileged now to be playing, to still be playing in a time where now media is taking note. Because 10 years ago, five years ago, that wasn't the case. Now is when things are really changing. I think if I were to sit down many, many years from now with my family and, and look back on my career, I hope that when one of those little girls plays her first game for Angel City, all she'll feel is the joy and the pride of playing you know, her first professional game or playing in her home city or just playing in the NWSL. It won't be like thinking of the fight we had to do to get there. Yeah, of course it's cool to be remembered as like being the first, but if all of us are forgotten because the sport has progressed so much, I will be so happy and so content.